How did your pickled beets turn out? I haven't tried them yet. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. I went to go do it and I went to go try them and Nathan said it wasn't time yet. <laughs> oh, bummer. That is okra. Mm. It's just a few of them growing close together. I gotcha. And then these are some the next wave of squash mm -hmm. and I've got more zinnias should be coming up there. And then those are cucamelons. My cucamelons are like growing in the walkways right now and I'm leaving them. Oh yeah? I am. Technically those are also your cucamelons. <laughs> <laughs> what is up guys we just filmed our interview show which you will see before you see this video I wanted to do this in the interview show and then we ended up talking a long time so I cut it in half <laughs> cut it in half so this is kind of like extension of the interview show I guess the mobile mobile I almost said mobile I've been listening <laughs> to the Harry Potter audiobook so I've got a little British thing going on <laughs> So we are gonna walk around and I would like Jill to have the opportunity to talk to me about some of the ideas she has and like things she loves and, and maybe some ideas she has about what she wants to plant where. You game yes. for that? Yes. All right. So if you missed the other video, which ugh, we are, so, it is sopping wet yes. out here. Yeah. I think we've had something like, I don't know, my rain gauges may be off, but over the course of the last few weeks, I think it's safe to say we've had like over 15 inches of rain. This, I don't remember having rain like this in a long time. Mm -mm. Not so long and so consistently, yeah. which of course the garden looks amazing. Yeah. because of it but the ground is extremely saturated there's been a lot of flooding around here oh my gosh look how big that beet is that beet is huge that is ginormous. I was asking about your pickling them because I was thinking I need to do something with these and I might pickle some yeah. and then um, I have roasted some of them and I like the and the kids eat them so well. The kids eat really? all of our fermented rutabagas, carrots, whatever. Like they eat will eat them all day long. If I like cut up a beet and gave it to them, no. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you also dehydrate those for like smoothies, mm -hmm. right? Did, Use the did powder. You, <laughs> did is that your shoe? Like coming out of the mud. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's start up. Oh, I want to show you that dahlia. Well, I, yes. We might have to do some. Some diving, some bees. <laughs> oh, the bees! You can hear them buzzing from like over here. No, I uh, I went to go look, but I got a little scared. There's borage. Oh wow! Isn't that lovely? It's white. And you have a honeybee on it. Yeah, they that like borage. That is interesting because mine's always been blue. I'm, yeah, it's I just different variety. Piece. This green stalk's looking really good. It looks so good. I mean, I need to add a little bit more soil to it because it's kind of compact down, and you're actually supposed to have the soil up towards the top. The top. Yeah. And like soil is just key for these because I have put in crummy soil and I get crummy results. Yeah. And then I put in good soil. So I'm going to completely redo mine with the right soil. Yeah. I'm excited to see this one. Look at that variegated tomato. Wow. Isn't that grand? And that is amazing. It has a lot of variegation to be out here too. Yeah. I think this shaded it a little bit and it's been so overcast. Oh, hey, look, a lily. Mm -hmm. These are, what is this? Bee balm. Wow, it's pretty, huh? That is so cool. Apparently, I sewed it because it's all together there. <laughs> so many bees. So many bees. The bees are everywhere. They're so on this stuff that it's like there's this buzz, this humming buzz. It's because I got stung on the top of my head. That is where the fear set in. Oh my goodness. I have not been the same. I said, How do you garden? She said, I have good dance. <laughs> okay, here is the flower. I'm telling you. <gasps> oh my you. God. I told you. That is huge. I sent Jill a picture of this and I said just be prepared because Whoa. because photos do not do it justice. Is that extraordinary? Yeah, I want to touch it, but I'm just not committed yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see those dance moves. <laughs> Bust what a move. Is this? That's a gladiola. Gladiola. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew that too. I can't. I just. Oh my goodness. Okay. The, these are really pretty too. And I don't remember the variety of. These all came in like a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. These are really pretty. Okay. I'm taking one for the team. What's going to. You be careful. The buzz is great. <laughs> Look at that. That is insane. It's amazing. And there's another one about to open. And there's. Is that so that crazy? Is Guys, can you believe that dahlia? It's huge. It's like bigger. It's as big as my hand. Gosh, who planted this garden? What a mess. <laughs> All up in there. We should cut those and put them in a jar yeah. since they're falling over anyway. Yeah. 
Girl, you, when I think of the cottage garden, I'm like I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what dreams are made of. It's right amazing. Here. It is. It's just so beautiful. I think that you could get like more dahlia bulbs. Those mm -hmm. are not even fancy bulbs. Yeah. That was a twelve dollar pack from mm -hmm. Sam's Club. Yeah. That had I think like six different kinds in it or something. Mm -hmm. This dill is really pretty. I did some uh, cut flower arrangements put them in there. this week, yeah, and I put some of these dill bouquets in there and they were just really lovely. So, I mean, <laughs> although the bees scare me a little, <laughs> at least I know there's lots of pollinators. I haven't seen a ton of pollinators in my garden this year and I told Nathan, I was like, is it the rain mm -hmm. or what? Because mm -hmm. I've seen less pollinators this year than I have in years I past, know. but I come over here and yeah. Literally, there's like this hum that's happening. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, native native bees. Yeah. So like most of those, those are, what are they, carp are they called carpenter bees? Yeah. So uh, mostly there aren't honey bees. Of course, we don't have our bees anymore. There's one hive back there, but the rest of them absconded after the utility company sprayed. But yeah, there are definitely a lot of pollinators out here. I've also been picking like I don't know. I think I probably picked a quart of blackberries yesterday, which is cool. Be Nathan's favorite. <laughs> Power. <laughs> I had a bite. <laughs> that one was really tart. I know, it's like a gamble every mm -hmm. time you take a bite. Someone told me that you pick the dull ones. If they're still shiny, they're not ready. Oh. That one was shiny. <laughs> All right, so I know you said you are looking forward to growing things for experiments sake. Mm -hmm. So is this gonna be more of the space for that up here, you think? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think that the high tunnel will be like growing most, yeah, most of our stuff. And even a good portion of this will be too. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much opportunity. Um, so like the beans, I do envision this always being yeah. a trellis full of beans. It's a nice barrier from the road. Yeah. Um, but just like maybe growing different varieties of beans. Mm -hmm. I've never grown peas before. So being able to grow like a pea, like a snap mm -hmm. pea like you have here. These fine leaves started tasting like more inside. These are cute. They're not supposed to be shelling peas. They're supposed to be more like snap peas, but they... Um, and you just eat this? Yeah, and it tastes pretty good now. If you bite the whole pod, the pod's gotten chewy. Oh, that but they didn't really taste like good. Yeah, they didn't taste like much of anything for a while. Also, you'll be able to grow these. I mean, when you move here in August, you could re-sow peas along here mm -hmm. or whatever. I think we'll probably have beans there, but when those beans come down, you could re-sow peas and have them until like November and December. I usually do that. What variety are these? I like them. They're these a called lot. Beauregard from row seven. And now they're like they're good. They're technically supposed to be a snap pea, I think. Like you're, you know, supposed to eat the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But when they were really young, they were real flavorless. Now it might have been because of all this rain we're having. So I'm gonna try them again later. Yeah. Now they have good flavor, but the outside's so tough, you really have to shell them. Mm -hmm. And these are another row seven thing. Now there's okra growing. Oh, these are big, Jess. Yeah, I know. I'm. I've started pulling them. I, th I think I just need to pull, I need to start juicing these beets. That mm -hmm. will help me get through them. Yeah. Your okra. <laughs> yeah, I f actually goofed. I thought that I had planted the beets there. Mm -hmm. And so I started the okra here. I was mistaken. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Now this has been completely pest riddled since it started, but this is that amaranth. Oh, that uh, coral. coral. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have some of those. Hey, and I guess the good thing is too, though, they found this one and not yeah. the other ones. Oh, look, there's a squash bed. <laughs> Get it, girl. <laughs> I've been picking eggs off oh, of them already. Man. You heard, because someone told me this the other day, and I just did it, that if you plant radishes around your squash plants, that it deters the squash bug. I have heard that. What I've been told is that you're supposed to let the radish go to seed around your squash plants. Okay. So, like, you put, like, they said even just one if it goes to seed. And so some people told me specifically white radishes, but I don't know if that's true or not. Well, I happen to sow some white radishes. Right, there you go. <laughs> You'll have to I'm willing see to try whatever. If it actually works, that would be really awesome. Yeah, it would be awesome. I just succession sow, so there's like more mm -hmm. squash coming up. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to growing in these spaces? Utilizing the arch trellises, I really like the idea of, because right now I only have like three or four, like I don't have oh, a yeah. ton. And so being able to grow the Chinese noodle beans and then just the regular beans and the different types of yeah. binding squashes, um, you know, the flowers, the trellis. Mm -hmm. So I am excited just to utilize more archways. Yeah. And also like the snake bean that you uh -huh. grew one year, 
would I actually probably like that? Maybe not, but I think that that would be really cool to grow yeah. and try that. And so utilizing some of the space for that too, yeah. I think will be really neat. That will be neat. So do you think you'll keep this space flowery as well as foodie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been looking into buying tulip bulbs and having an entire bed of just like tulips. That would be so cool. Because we have this really cool idea of <laughs> your greenhouse up here that you mm -hmm. started with on the hill, turning that into a drying shed. Oh, cool. So drying, you know, our flowers and stuff like that. And so that would be a really cool opportunity. And then we're going to try to come up with some sort of like cooler system. Yeah. And like the tulips, you can harvest those and they're good for like months yeah. in the cooler. I'm really excited to see what all of this looks like with just slightly different goals in mind. Yeah. You know, some yeah. the same goals, but mm -hmm. like just a different bend. I think it's just really yeah. going to be cool um, because like, for instance, I would have never thought to use that greenhouse as a drying shed. It's pretty much been hay storage yeah. this season. Yeah. And even drying like onions in it yeah. and it would just be really cool. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. So what are you envisioning back here? I should point out, this is like how dreamers <laughs> process. Like we talk about, what do you think here? Like this is not a contract. This yeah. is not, yeah. this is brainstorming and walking yes. around. But there's a lot of space out here. There's a lot of space out here that I'm not, I didn't even plan, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, and I actually like really like to get your opinion and you're, you know, we were kind of talking about that earlier is I've got my seed starting greenhouse that I also, once seed starting season's over with, the tables will just come like up. come up and then I'd like to be able to plant in ground and you've already worked the ground really well where your potatoes are. Yeah, I think that would be a great place yeah, for so that. So that's where this, our seed starting greenhouse will go. Yeah. Which will be exciting. This area had our first chicken coop. Wow. Before we had the one that was over in the woods, mm -hmm. there was a chicken coop here. And that's why I decided, well, let's go ahead and throw a garden in because it had like a 12 inch cap of just yeah. like fertilized mm -hmm. compost. And so we've been adding to it over the last two years yeah. and planting here. We added another layer. So you got really great soil here. Yeah. Hopefully I don't have to worry about any turtles. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jill's like, I'm surprised you're not calling me a heifer on that one. <laughs> so, so this last year, this garden space, I planted melons back here. And I had such a hard time with little box turtles coming and eating my stuff. And you don't think of turtles as being like a serious garden pest that one would have to deal with. But I did, and I can't tell you how many melons and pumpkins, there were pumpkins over here in squash, how many of those I came, I know. Hey, do you want to dig some potatoes and take them? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I came back here and found a pumpkin and a turtle sitting there munching on it. Right here. I'm, I told you. <laughs> Turtle. I was about to say I have a turtle problem, but technically you have a turtle oh, problem. It's a dead turtle, poor guy. <gasps> you know what I bet happened to that turtle? What? I bet he got up underneath that fence and, and couldn't get out and those chickens got him. Oh no. Well, well maybe no. you'd have <laughs> maybe. less of a turtle problem. I'm sorry that he died for a rest in peace little turtle, but he's not gonna be eating. Yeah, look at all your Yeah, potatoes the potatoes are just coming up. Um yeah, let's find a basket or something. So I've started digging some of these. Um, you can probably see. Do you rip up the whole plant? I usually do, yeah. When, when I can see that most of them are at a pretty decent size, I just pull the whole plant up and pull all of them out from underneath. And then you have to dig around where they were in the ground. I don't know that these are all that big though. Do you want me to try another plant? I like them small. Okay. So. If you don't care, I don't No, care. yeah, no. Like this is a ton of potatoes right here. And the plants are starting to like. Oh my gosh, it's raining potatoes. <laughs> What do they call them whenever they're small like this? Is it new potatoes? New potatoes. I mean, there's some pretty good ones though. Yeah. I love them when they're really tiny though. Sometimes I'll buy those from the store, but they're kind of expensive, mm -hmm. especially when you have to buy like a bunch of a few bags yeah. at a time because of how many kids I have. So I don't buy them often. And so I love harvesting them when they're like small. Look at this it's though. Like it's a so treat. Exciting. Plus there's so many here that you can kind of just start harvesting them now. What I found last year too, this is Ad Adirondack Blue and these are from our seed potatoes from last year. I and, grew those this year. Yeah, well I found that they started sprouting in the ground kind of early, so oh. that's why. Jessica, look at this. Oh, <laughs> isn't that exciting? <laughs> it is a very gratifying job. Yeah, it this is. is probably my favorite gardening job is harvesting potatoes. 
I just can't believe I've never grown potatoes. Charlie said she wants to grow potatoes in uh, the kid garden. Aw. I was like, okay, girl. You could, yeah. Some of these are pretty good size. Yeah. Look, that's a decent size yeah. potato. And look at this. This soil's so good. It is. This is a great place for the... The greenhouse. I like how we're like, let's walk around and talk about your plants for the garden, and then we're like, oh, potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Some of, some of the varieties, I guess, just aren't as grow, fast growing as others. I don't know, there's some pretty good size ones in here. Isn't it just so cool how like food grows? <laughs> no. <it is. laughs> like sometimes I'm just like, wow, we just came out here and we're just like getting I know. dinner. Intern and I planted these. It took us half a day, mm -hmm. maybe, and that's including moving the soil back here and mulching and everything. Not even half a day. I doubt it took us four hours together to do this. It right. probably took like two and a half maybe. Jeremiah helped plant them. Ben helped me get the space ready. That's a lot of food. So now you can immediately take these inside and use them. Yeah. Or is there a like a curing process with If potatoes? you want to store them, you need to cure them. So they just need a chance to kind of like dry out okay. if you're going to store them. So like for these, you don't wash them off. Okay. You just go and lay them out like in your herb room or whatever. Okay. Just I like put a sheet down or something and lay them all on a flat sheet and uh, let them, you can even put a fan in there. This is so gratifying. I will tell you that the last time I dug a bunch of potatoes is when I had the life scared out of me by the biggest earthworms I've ever seen. <laughs> I screamed like a little girl on the camera. Ooh, these are nice. Ooh, something got that one. Yeah. There's voles and mm -hmm. grubs and they need to eat too. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we planted extra. So when they're small like this, I just start eating them now and I'll just work down the rows yep. and eventually get more. Yep. Wow, that's like a hole underneath that one plant. That's crazy. Those are, those are nice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll plant potatoes. <laughs> How many pounds of food would you say that is? Let me test it out. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. It's probably at least five, six pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It is nice. And they're organic. I've, n I've never done a lick of anything to those except for put them in the ground. Yeah, those sweet. are from seed potatoes from last year that it's in compost. I've never even watered these. That's insane. But lo And look how many more you have. I know, I know. We just did a tiny little like bit. Barely. That was like five plants. Yeah so good that's insane i love growing food <laughs> i grew that i i feel guilty even saying i grew that because i These little bitty ones are falling through the cracks yeah the little bitty ones are so good too all right jill well we have thoroughly run down my camera battery <laughs> and we're filthy and yeah yeah <laughs> I think they're gonna want to know the other stuff, but I guess you'll just have to go watch the journey to see what <laughs> all Jill and Nathan decide to do with all these spaces. They're gonna grow a lot of food. That we can be certain. Yes. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Until next time.